Good morning, Pleasant Hill Church of God. Good morning, Jay. I heard a fun fact today. Do you realize that a, a pig cannot see the sky? That he physically cannot see the sky? Aren't we so thankful we can see the sky? <laughs> so I'm going to read a, a psalm here. I want to read a beginning of a psalm real quick because I, I think it, it's just, I love the psalms. They're always inspirational. Psalm 113, I'm just going to read the first three verses. Praise the Lord. Praise those servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forever, from the rising sun to the place where the sun sets. The name of the Lord is to be praised. And today we are going to praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. We're going to praise it with this is the day. That's how we're going to start it out. So if you'll stand with us, we're going to sing this is the day. But the chorus is very easy, so hopefully you can go with it. And it's a song that I think we all should realize without you. Because without, without Jesus in our lives, without God, we're just, we're nothing. So without you is the song here.
about you if you how it feels to you. But when we don't have Christ in our lives, it's just not the same. Those of us who do have him, we know he is so great. heart without emotion, like a wound without pain.
Thank you, church. I'm sorry, I, uh, we have to bring the backup quarterback in today. We, we don't have all our starters here, so I appreciate you guys singing so well with us. <laughs> That's you, Nick. <laughs> we're without Nick, we're without Scott. We're like the replacements, really. If you've seen that movie, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, so if you're new to the church this week, which I don't think anybody is, we will be different even next week. All of us. So, but we're going to sing a song called God Turn It Around. If you'll stand and sing with us, please. <laughs> Bring God, come and turn this thing around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. I'm calling on the name that changes everything. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. All of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. Come on, church now. I'm praying, God, come and turn this thing around. Turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around. Oh yeah. I'm calling on his name. It changes everything. God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around. Keep it upbeat here. We're going to go with a song, Because He Lives. It's got a 
A lot of moving things. We're gonna, we are gonna get you guys singing in this one. Hopefully, we can hear you really loud. So, we'll sing this song before the message. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. blessed to hear us sing that. As we Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for all the blessings that you pour into each one of our lives. And Father God, I pray that you be with us in this service, that we, we always leave it all behind and come to you with everything and worship you, Lord. Father God, I, I pray you be with Teresa in this message today. 
We know that something had to be put on her heart fast and quick for this. But Lord, we know that you will make it happen, that we will hear inspiring words. Father God, I, I pray you be with each and every one of us. Keep us free from harm's way as we travel and do everything we do. But Father God, I pray that we always keep you first in our lives, that without you we are nothing. May we always remember that we need that. I thank you, Lord, for everything. As we pray this all in Jesus' name, amen. I asked Scott last night, I said, are you feeling good? He says, yes, I feel great. I think I'll be great tomorrow. And then he wakes up this morning and says, Teresa, I feel really, really bad. <laughs> so I'm like, well, okie dokie then. So here we go. Um, I wanted to speak on God's calling this morning. And I want to first off give a disclaimer. I am not a preacher. I'm a preacher's wife. So that doesn't really qualify me to be up here speaking in front of everybody. But I'm going to try to do it anyway since uh, he's kind of on the low down here. I don't know if that's what that really means. But anyway, so, yeah. Oh, junior church. Yes, we have junior church. <laughs> I thought I'd make them sit here and torture them as well as I torture you, but Jay says I can't. So, <laughs> all right. Well, I was thinking about God's calling because that's what I've thought about a lot this last week. As Tim said that we had the minister's conference this last week and you know, being in ministry for a very, very, very long time, I know it's at least 35 years, but I can't really remember how much longer than that. So I don't really keep up with dates very well. But being in ministry that long, there's been a lot of really great ups and there's been some really very low downs. And um, sometimes being called to ministry is not an easy thing to do. Actually, a lot of times it's not an easy thing to do. But I thought I'd talk about, talk about God's calling and how that happens in people's lives and how it happened in my life and um, just kind of give some, just kind of some insights into the ability to answer God's calling. You know, a lot of people think that God's calling is like, oh, you know, this is this great thing that God's called me to. A lot of times you go in kicking it and screaming, which is kind of the way that I did, um, you know. And I'm, I'm going to talk about Moses and Jonah this morning. Moses was one. I'll read here in just a minute talking about Moses. And, you know, he thought that he didn't have what it took to do what God called him to do. And I feel that way this morning. My pants are too short. I found out, you know, so, and I, you know, and I didn't, I'm thinking, oh gosh, I got to do this real quick. I'm not sure if I've got, you know, I don't have the words to say. I'm not smart enough. I'm not like Scott. He's smarter than I am. Nobody's going to want to hear this. You know, I'm a, I'm just not the person that God should be calling to this. But for some reason this morning, he did. So here I am. And um, I'm not saying that I have all the answers because I don't. And if you want to ask questions, you might want to wait and ask Scott later because he'll probably tell you that <laughs> the good thing is he's not on Facebook, so he is not watching this. <laughs> anyway, so y'all don't tell him, okay? <laughs> I'm going to start out reading in... Um, I almost said I'm going to start reading in Moses, but we're going to read in Exodus instead because I don't think Moses is a book of the Bible. All right, and we're going to start with, let me look at my notes here. I wanted to title this sermon, I'll tell you first, our speech. I, I, it says, being called by God, I really didn't want to, but, okay, and that's kind of what it is sometimes. I really didn't want to, but, you know, I guess I have to do it anyway. And being called by God is not an easy thing. You know, a lot of times people say, well, if you feel comfortable with it, well, sometimes God really takes us out of our comfort zones. And, you know, when I went into the Bible college, um, what I, I had been in a really bad relationship with somebody. It had been a really rough time. Things were just not good. And I had always wanted to give my life to God, but had gotten, let life bog me down. Life had taken me on a sidetrack for about five years and um, at least five years. And it was just a really rough time in my li life. And I mean, I'll admit it, I w had problems with alcohol and some other stuff because of being who I was at that time and just kind of letting life get to me. And you want to talk about feeling like a failure. That's where I was. I felt like a failure. 
And um, so my cousin told me, she says, you need to get out of this relationship. You need to go to the Bible college. You've always talked about doing that. You need to go and get away from this and really seek God. And I didn't want to because I was stuck where I was. And I thought, you know, it's, I feel good in this rut. It's okay. You know, I, everything fits. There's, you know, I don't have to do any effort to make any effort to get out of this rut. So what I did was she said, she talked to me, she said, just pray about it. Ask God for signs, ask God, ask God for something that he wouldn't possibly do. And I'm like, okay, fine. And so I asked God, I said, okay, if you want me to get away from this relationship, if you want me to follow you, here's the four things I've got. I lived in a very poor area for one thing. We were very poor. I didn't have the money. I had just got a truck. I had a horse that I had to get rid of. And I had, I had no like clothing that I could take with me. So I asked God for four, those four things. I said, I need to sell my horse, sell the truck, get money and clothing. And I thought this is never going to happen. Lo and behold, within an hour's time, I had all four answers in an hour's time. And I'm going to, you know, I didn't go, Woo-hoo! I was so happy. I was, I bawled. I was really upset. I was very angry about it. I had to work out all these details. God gave me all the answers to follow him. And I, I had known since a little girl that I wanted to follow him, but I had allowed life to sidetrack me. And I didn't think I was good enough. And especially at that time, because of the things, you know, just I had let things happen. I thought I'm not good enough, but you know, God has a way of telling us it doesn't really matter how good we are. You know, if you look at any character person in the Bible, every one of them has shortcomings and failings. Every single one of them, all of them did things that they should never have done. Every one of them. I mean, you know, David slept with somebody else's wife and then had the dude killed. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and Moses did not want to do this. He killed somebody. Then he went out and lived in the wilderness and he was kind of a jerk and he was whiny. And, uh, you know, there was all kinds of things that happened. Joseph was a little bit on the arrogant side. So his brothers got mad, threw him in a pit in the middle of the desert. And then he was sold into slavery. So there's all kinds of things. You know, Paul killed Christians for pity's sake and God still turned him around. So I'm going to read real quick. I keep saying I'm going to read, but now I really am. So um, I'm going to read in Exodus. And um, there's. I'm just going to read as fast as I can here. Um, it's Moses and Moses 3. I mean, it's Exodus 3, excuse me. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it didn't burn up. So Moses thought, I'll go over and see this strange sight. First mistake. He should have said nope and ran the other way if he didn't want to do what he was about to do. But he says, why does the bush burn up? And so that when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called him from within the bush saying, Moses, Moses. Moses said, uh, here I am. And he says, do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place you're standing on is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Talk about intimidating. He was, I mean, just think about what God is telling him who he is. Okay, and it says at this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Okay, so here's what happens. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I've heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So he's wanting to rescue the Israelites. And he says, so I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Wow, what a cool calling. Moses is like, oh, great, okay? He says, uh, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Okay, excuse number one, why are you calling me? What is there about me that you would want? That's how I felt even this morning. And I've been doing this for 35 years and still feel that way. Like, oh my goodness, why would you put me in that position? I'm not good enough. I've done all this stuff. I know how awful I am. I know what I think when I'm driving down the road. I know how I feel over the speedway every morning whenever somebody passes me in that stupid merge lane by the speedway on 55. I hate that place. And I even prayed the other night that if God wants me to be a good follower, he needs to remove the merge lane. Okay. <laughs> he hasn't done that yet, but I'm hoping <laughs> so that I'm not a jerk every single day when I drive down the merge lane. But anyway, so Moses says, who am I? that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. God says, it's okay. I'll be with you. 
And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. You think that convinced Moses? Not yet. Okay, Moses said to God, well, suppose I go to the Israelites and I say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what should I tell them? It's like, how do they even know who you are? You're God, and I know that, but they're not going to know that. So why should I go and tell them this? Because they're not going to believe me. God says, okay. Well, he says, again, he says, um, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. So God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. And I'm just going to give you a little side note here. I think it's very interesting that God says, I am that I am. We are created in God's image. And when we are created in God's image, we are given the name of our father. So when we look in the mirror every day and we say, I am, what do you say about yourself? I am a child of God. Or do we say, I am no good and I'm not good enough? It, it does make a difference in our calling to know that I am a child of God. I am worthy of his calling because he made me thus. He, his grace and his mercy has given me the ability to answer that calling no matter what position I'm in. Okay, so Moses goes on and whines a little bit. He says, well, he says, what if they don't believe me or listen to me? And then another excuse, let me look at it here. I don't know how to speak to people. Well, that's how I felt this morning. I don't know how to speak to people. You know, what am I going to say? What if they don't believe me? What if they think, what if, what if, what if, what if? And God finally gets a little bit irritated at him. And he says, it actually even says, then the Lord's anger burned against Moses. And he said, what about your brother Aaron the Levite? If you can't speak, we'll just let him go with you and he can say everything. And Moses is like, you know, so he goes. And he answers this calling. And it's kind of funny, even in all of his resistance, and this whining and everything else, guess who's in the Bible? Moses, because he went in and he went ahead and did what God wanted him to do, even with all the whining and the throwing the fits and everything else, and he did what God wanted him to do, and God made it amazing because that's what God does. Whenever there's something that God wants us to do, he can make it amazing. And, you know, I have been, like I said, talking about this ministry, I have looked back so many times at my life and I've thought, you know, because God loved me and because I answered his calling, he rescued me. Because if I'd have stayed where I was, I don't even know if I'd still be alive right now. I don't know what would have happened in my life. It was a bad situation I was in. I don't know where I would be, but I know where I am now. I am a follower of God and I am his daughter and I am thankful because he's called me. That doesn't mean that I don't still whine. I whine at the speedway every day. Whenever somebody passes me, it makes me mad. You know, I'm not perfect. I make lots and lots of mistakes, you know, and, but God loves me and he calls me anyway because he knows that's who I am. He knows that I'm a mistake maker. He knows that I make mistakes, but he still wants me. And I know everybody out here makes mistakes. If you don't, you can raise your hand and we'll talk later and it's, you know, that's all good. You can tell me how you don't do it, but we all make mistakes, but God wants us anyway. And he calls us to him every day. Are we answering that call? Are we answering that call? You know, okay, and here's, okay, now I'm going to go on. Here's the other one. The reason I picked Moses and I picked Jonah this morning is because Moses is the one where I'm whiny. Jonah's the one where I'm acting like an, an idiot, just to say, you know, like I don't want to have to answer because I don't like those people and I don't want them called to you because I don't like them. Have you ever had people that you have to pray for because they're really irritating or they've done something really horrible to you and you think, why should I have to pray for that person? Why should I have to love that person? Why should I want them to come to the feet of Jesus? I would like to see them, you know, at, at, when the resurrection happens and there's supposed to be this little zapping moment where the wicked get destroyed. Sometimes I'm right there on that thinking, you know, it'd be nice to see. You know, and I don't really don't want that, but, you know, <laughs> don't tell Scott. I'm glad he's on Facebook. <laughs> He'll say, oh, Teresa. But, um, you know, sometimes there are people in our lives that we really don't want to have to forgive because they really hurt us. They've done some really stinky stuff, and we don't want to have to forgive them. And, you know, to be called to forgive is another calling, and that's the hard one to me because I've got people in the, my past, people in my life, people in my present, probably people in my future that, you know, I've got problems with. And I think, oh, 
I don't know if I can handle this or not. I don't know if I can handle being a forgiving person because sometimes I'm not that person. But, um, you know, that's another calling that I have, I have to honor, and it's very difficult. But given that to God, when you pray for somebody that has wronged you, that has made you feel like you're not worthy, um, and you pray for that person, it does change things. If it, change, if it doesn't change them, it changes you. It changes me in my heart because I for, have had to learn to forgive. And one thing I could tell about Scott, when he was, um, he was in that accident with the drunk driver that had hit him and killed his best friend in the front seat, it was very, very difficult for him for a little while to have to forgive that. But when he forgave that, it changed his entire life. Now, I don't know what's happened to that young man. that uh, We don't know. But it changed Scott's life, and it helped him to answer God's calling. And it's, it's pretty incredible when you have to forgive. You know, um, okay, I'm going to go on to Jonah real quick because I don't want to I'm here. Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Right off the bat in this story, God says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah, his first answer was he ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. So it is a good thing that Moses didn't run away because this is what happens. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the ferry, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. That was not a good idea. And God says, God says, go. And Jonah says, nope. And he ran away. And people, oh, can see, um, and in verse six, let's see. Um, there came up a great storm. That's what happened. There came up a great storm in the ship, and it was being tossed about. Most of you know this story, just to make a long story short, but the ship was just really rocking and reeling, and they thought they were going to crash. And so they finally figured out that it had to be Jonah that was the problem. So the, guy, the captain went down and said, look, I don't know what's going on here and what's happened between you and your God, but you need to ask forgiveness, and you need to figure out what's happening here because this is, this is bad, and we're all going to die. So Jonah finally goes upstairs and he says, okay, well, pitch me overboard because, you know, um, that's the only thing that's going to help. So they pitched him overboard and up comes a great fish and swallows Jonah and he was in the belly of the whale or fish or whatever for three days and then the fish spit him up on land. What I love about this story, and I could have prayed this prayer a thousand times and I'm going to read it to you, it's Jonah's prayer. And, you know, we've got, Scott and I have gone through some hard times. A lot of you know, we've lost our daughter. I lost a lot of my family members. I lost my brother in an accident. I lost both my parents to cancer. Then we lost our daughter to, you know, um, a, childhood, a childhood illness that took a toll on her. And so it's been very difficult. So and there's this prayer that Jonah cries out to God. It says, in my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the depths of the grave, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the seas, and the current swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed has wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me and forever. But you brought up my life up from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. But I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. You know, we can be in really low spots, really bad times in our lives, and God is all we have. And we have to cry out to God. And I'm not saying it's always easy because sometimes you're angry, maybe even angry at God at some of the things that happened. And you can't understand what's happening. But one thing that I know is having been in the pits, and I wasn't in the belly of a fish, but I guarantee I felt like I had seaweed wrapped around my head sometimes. And I felt like I was about as low as a person could get. Losing a child is not easy. You know, it's, it's very, very difficult. Losing other families is not, family members is not easy. There's other things that we go through too. You know, maybe there's an addiction or something that we have. Whatever it is, those things are difficult. They're things that generally come from our past and the things that we feel about ourselves and, you know, like the, and, and, and continue to drag us down and feel, make us feel like we're not worthy. But God always thinks we're worthy. And um, the song that they sang a while ago, 
um, I am nothing without you. To me, that's a very important message because I am nothing without God, and I do have the ability to call on him. I, I, it is, he wants us to call on him, and he can bring us up out of those low times, and he can change our hearts, and he can change our lives because he wants to, because he loves us. You know, it's not God. What is the song that says, and it's a scripture too, but it says, God is, God is for us. He's not against us. God is never against us. He wants us. And, the, and he calls each of us. And maybe not, he may not call you into ministry, but he's calling you and he's calling you to belong to him. He's calling you because he loves you and everything within you is, belongs to him anyway. And when you surrender and answer that call, He's there. He's always there. And, um, you know, I'm not going to say that life is perfect whenever you are called and whenever you answer that calling. It's not. You know, following God is not always an easy task. Following God sometimes is very painful. But it's but the, we know what the outcome is. We know that it's not about this life. And we know that God wants to save us. And, you know, sometimes he saves us by saving others. I mean, he saves others by saving us. He, when we go through the troubles that we go through, the pain that we go through, it gives us an insight into the heart of Christ so that we can see what suffering is and therefore we can reach out and help others that suffer. And um, I just think that the, the, whole, the whole idea of God calling me and wanting me to be with him is the most beautiful thing in the world because we know that this will world is not an easy place. It's a difficult place. And if you answer his call, things may not always be easier, but they, but you have him to depend on. And he does change the trajectory of your life in, in, in huge ways. He will change the trajectory of your life. And anyway, that's all I've got to say this morning. So don't tell Scott if you hated it. Just tell him that I was wonderful. But anyway, no, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> Thank you guys. Teresa, that was fabulous. Great job. I don't know who else could have stood up here after finding out in the morning they had to speak, but you couldn't have told that from her because she had that well, well said. And we're going to follow that up with the last song here called He Knows My Name because, like, it's, it, it is to know that, that, that God just, he knows everything about you. Like they talk about he knows the number of hairs on your head. That's, that's to know a lot of things. He knows everything about you. So let us stand and sing this song. Oh,
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we just ask that you fill each and every one of our hearts with your love and your spirit. Let us go out from here and say that it was good to be in the house of the Lord. We ask that you watch over us this week. May we have a great week and bring us back. We ask that you just send your son soon. In his most precious name.